a trend that I've seen ever since we started TA Targets was people just building guns for the sake of building guns. And while I think as an American, you have the right to build whatever guns you want, and I'm not necessarily saying that collecting guns is a bad move, I do think that if you want to fully exercise your second amendment and be more capable for the community around you, we should be intentional about the types of firearms that we are building. So today in this video, we're gonna be talking about what I would consider to be the four most important styles of guns that every American should own. I think every American should consider having a micro carbine on tap, and there's quite a few reasons why I would say that. I know a lot of people would be questioning whether or not having a five inch 300 blackout from a ballistic standpoint makes a lot of sense, but this doesn't have to be a 300 blackout. It could be a nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine, it could be some other caliber, but I think that it's important to have a rifle that you can conceal carry in a way that is extremely, extremely discreet. Now, we all know that no matter how small your carbine is, it's never going to be quite as easy to carry it concealed as a sidearm. So just keep in mind as I'm explaining this, I always carry my sidearm with me, even if I am carrying my five inch 300 blackout. A couple of the places that I want to carry my 300 blackout, places like movie theaters, going to church on Sunday, malls, driving around with my vehicle when I don't need a larger loadout or office supplies or any of that other stuff that I would normally carry in a bigger bag. If I'm just bouncing back and forth on errands, I like to carry the five inch 300 blackout because it really does blend in extremely well. So just going over the parts on this build so you guys get an idea of what this thing is. We've got a BCM stock. I know someone's gonna ask, this is a drop chart for my seven and a half inch upper. Standard buffer tube, got a law tactical folder, standard. Charging handle, forward assist, nothing fancy there. Magpul grip, Geisley SD3G trigger. Just ejection cover, standard, standard mag release. We do have one of the paddle bolt catches over there. So that is nice on this small build. No weird mag wells or anything like that. Vortex Spark Solar up top. The lower receiver is a Poverty Pony lower. Anderson Manufacturing, if you didn't catch my drift. Upper receiver is a five inch Veritas tactical barrel rail upper gas tube. We've got an X300V on top and a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider. As you saw in the video, I do like to run this suppressed as well from time to time. We've got a Neomag sentry strap, blue force gear sling. I do have a second sentry strap back here because it's really hard to stow a sling on a gun that is this tiny. Now the reason I run an X300V is for infrared and white light. Spark Solar does have night vision and low settings. So I wanna be able to have a white light and you'll see that consistently on every build going forward. I also like to be fluent with my gun, with my night vision. So having infrared on it is extremely important. As far as the bag that I use to carry this gun, I just pulled this one's brand new out of our inventory. It's a Transit Sling 2.0 in green. I'm gonna retire my black bag. I like using some kind of not black color out in the wild. I feel like it's less obvious. So the way that this would fit in this bag is you just fold it up. It does fit very snug, but it will fit in this main compartment. And as you guys can see in a very tiny discreet package, I can keep my medical up front, armor in the back, spare magazine in the back, five inch 300 blackout, no frills, nothing extra. It is just a basic rifle that is able to be concealed and it gives me more potency than my nine millimeter. I carry it typically with 130 grain spear varmint bullets and they launch out of this. I chronograph them at just under 1600 feet per second out of this guy here. So as far as a close range carbine, this is an epic, epic option that I like to incorporate into my daily carry but this doesn't check every single box. I don't think that we should stop at a microcarbine when we're looking at what four most important guns we should have in our arsenal. 
So I also want something that is close range, but has a little bit more potency, a little bit further reach than the five inch 300 blackout. Still can be carried in a bag, maybe not as discreetly, but in an emergency, I can move around with it inside of my bag. And that would be my 10.3 inch 556. Having a rifle that can be more of a close quarter, but also stretch out a little bit farther is also extremely important. I know a lot of people will consider the 10.3 inch 5.56 to kind of be a marginal barrel length as far as ballistics are concerned. But when I'm looking at my home defense, being able to drive back and forth to work with a rifle on tap that might not be as compact as the five inch, but still can fit inside of my gamut 2.0 bag, the 10.3 checks off all my boxes. When we start to get to the 12 fives or a 13 or 14 five, something like that, the guns just get to be a little bit too long for me to carry with me every single day. Now the Gamut 2.0 is not a bag that I would say is discreet, but if I had to ditch my vehicle, if it breaks down, I got to hitch a ride with the tow truck driver while they're getting my Jeep back to a shop or whatever might happen, whatever might happen in your situation or in your world, having a rifle like this is still small enough that it can fit inside of a backpack that is discreet. So talking about the build, we've just got a Magpul MOE stock, standard buffer tube, Law Tactical folder. This has a Geisley charging handle, standard forward assist, standard safety and all that stuff, dust cover, mag release, all that is standard. This one has a Geisley SDE trigger, which is my personal favorite trigger, Magpul grip. Over here, bolt catch, factory, nothing fancy going on over there no flared magwell or anything weird. This does have a superlative gas system. So this is converted to a piston. Got a Vortex UH1 on the top here. This is a Blue Force Gear two point sling, which is what I run for many of my different guns. Sentry, sentry strap from Neomag up front here. Got a cloud defensive rain off to the side here if I need really potent white light. And then I do have a Surefire X300V for infrared up front on the muzzle device. That crusty little thing is a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider. And I do run this with my suppressor, especially when we are shooting at night. Now this gun's not a hunting gun. It is not a distance gun. This is not a super potent gun, but I carry it with 60 grain soft point ammunition and it does do really well. So a bump in the night gun, truck gun, something that I can tote around with me every single day, 10.3 inch checks off all of those boxes. And I think that it's important for Americans to consider having a mid-length rifle like this. And again, it could be a 10.3, an 11.5, 12.5, 14.5, whatever you think fits the bill of a mid-range rifle. I think that it's important to consider them for your arsenal as well. But there's times where I think that a 10.3 inch is just not potent enough, where I need a little bit more reach. I need a magnified optic, something that I can reach out two, three, 400 yards if need be and land shots. When we start talking about having a fighting set of rifles, I also think there's some advantages in having a larger length barrel as well. So my 16 inch 5.56 is the next one that I wanna show you guys. Having a 16 inch fighting rifle on tap, I think is a very important aspect 
of being a capable citizen in the United States. And that is because I would argue that a 16 inch rifle is probably one of the best, most well-rounded barrel lengths for a 223 caliber. Now you could do an AK, could do a 5.45 by 39. You could argue a 300 blackout in a 16 inch would be a solid move as well. I want some round consistency, but I do like round diversity as well. But for me, when we get into the 16s, I like having a 5.56. And obviously, this one has an LPVO. This is a Razor 1 to 10 scope. Got it all spray painted because this is also a hunting rifle for me. So real quick, I just wanted to go over the build for you guys and give you a rundown. So this is a Zion 15. This is in the factory configuration. Factory stocks, B5 stock, B5 grip, standard forward assist, standard charging handle. On the trigger, we have an SDC. That would be the super dynamic combat trigger from Geisley. Solid trigger, another one that I really enjoy. It's a little bit heavier than the SDE. It's sort of like having a mil spec trigger that's very smooth. No flared magwell, anything like that. Standard trigger guard. Again, Razor, one to 10 up top. On this side, the bolt catch is factory as well. We have a Flatline Fiberco two-point sling over here. Again, you'll notice a Neomag sentry strap. Up front, we've got two different lights. We have the Cloud Defensive Rain 2.0 on this side, and here's their pressure pad back here. Then we have a Surefire 640V, this is the Vampire, on the left side. And this is what I primarily use for night vision when I'm using a PVS-30 in front of this optic. I want to have infrared downrange so I can actually see with the PVS-30. Then we have a Magpul bipod as well as a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider. So when we're looking at a 16 inch rifle, this is not something that I feel I would carry around in my vehicle. It's just big. As you can see, it's about half the size of me. But out of the 16 inch barrel, I'm getting really good ballistics. I have heavy loads, light loads for varmints and things like that. There's a lot of versatility with a 16 inch rifle. And when I think of societal collapse or bad things happening or just even be able to go out and provide for my family, this gun checks off all of those boxes. And if I was in a really precarious situation, having a 16 inch 5.56 is one of my go-to lengths with a 5.56 caliber. One other thing I didn't mention is I do also have a Picatinny rail on the bottom. And this is for when I'm mounting it on my tripod because when we're hunting, we shoot off of tripods because these guns get really heavy when they have either thermal in front of the optic, a PVS-30 suppressor, all that stuff. You end up with about a 20 pound rifle. But again, I think it's an important aspect of American gun culture. And I think that everybody should consider having a 16 inch rifle on tap. Now, this is a bonus round for everybody because I have my other 16 inch rifle here. And you'll notice it is set up very similarly to the previous one. This one is my select fire lower. I know, be jealous. It's uh, it's fun having a select fire lower, but I digress. It's got a Strike Eagle one to eight first focal plane with a throw lever on top. It's an awesome optic that we stock over at Arcane. You guys should check that out. This is the exact same build going through with the exception that this has one of Geisley's SOCOM triggers. So it's a select fire and just to show all you weenies out there, there is a giggle switch for the naysayers. Same sling setup. Instead of a 640V on this one, I have a 640 a Scout DF. This is just a white light with a pressure pad on it. I have an offset red dot on this bad boy as well. I still have the Picatinny rail on the bottom. So there's some consistency there because I could use this as a coyote gun. I can also use it as a night vision gun. And if I need to do that really quick, I'll slap an X300V on top or I'll switch out to a 640V for some infrared light as well. But as you can tell, I kind of nerd out over the 16 inch rifles because I really do believe that the 16 inch is an ideal length for every single American to own. But sometimes you need some potency. Sometimes you need a more precise rifle that is more geared to long range shooting or hunting. And you want a caliber that might be a little bit more potent than a 5.56. And for that reason, I also believe that it is important for every American to have some sort of bolt action rifle.
If I told you guys that bolt action rifles played an important role in American history, you probably would not argue with me. But if I told you that they are also an important part of your arsenal, and one that I think that most people are going to overlook, you might roll your eyes at me and say, okay, Boomer, we don't wanna talk about bolt action rifles. And I know that over the years, I have also fallen into the trap of believing that a bolt action rifle like this Ruger American in front of me really only serves a purpose in a hunting application. And now I think that's one of their best characteristics and best traits is the fact that they are versatile at hunting and putting down game. And our tradition as Americans is often centered around rifles like this bolt action 308. Now, the reason I think that they're extremely important is often bolt action rifles can give you a little bit of an upper hand where a gas gun may not. Even with a less expensive build like this Ruger American, you can get a ton of accuracy and repeatability out of a bolt action rifle in a 308, 65 Creedmoor, or any of the popular calibers that are available. And what you ultimately get is a little bit more potency than say a short 5.56. And there's times where we might want that slower rate of fire, but higher precision, whether you are hunting or defending your life. I know a lot of you might roll your eyes and say, hey, anything with a magnified optic, like a bolt gun, anything like this kind of a setup, you're out at what people will call murder distance. And the reality is you don't know what kind of threats you might face in your future, in your home, on your property. And I'm not even necessarily just talking about people. This could be coyotes or wolves or bears or things like that. So having a bolt action rifle in a potent caliber like a 308, I think is a very smart addition to the lineup of four rifles that I would recommend. And what I wanna do is quick go over this particular rifle and it's not quite as decked out as my AR-15s because it fills a very, very specific role. But this started out as a Ruger American chassis, I should say Ruger American action, this is an 18 inch 308. It did come with the threaded barrel. When I purchased this particular rifle, it had the factory stock. I know now at this point you can buy the Ruger Americans with this Magpul stock already on it. it had a rotary mag, a very small bolt, um, lever I should say, on the bolt. And it was pretty unhandy. <laughs> it was a clunky rifle. And honestly, the stock on a couple points on the barrel did touch. So I got rid of all that. I put a Magpul stock on this thing. I like the Magpul stock because it has detachable 10 round magazines. I think that's important. We're talking about bolt action rifles. I kind of do rule out the fixed magazine or hunting style rifles that only hold two or three rounds. That's just not handy for what I'm looking at doing. But anyway, I did the Magpul stock. Did a Vortex 4 to 16. There's a Viper HST scope, it's just a second focal plane scope, Magpul bipod, and I'm running an ASR flash hider, just like all the other guns, so I can run my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. And Anarchy Outdoors did the hookup here with the lever and acorn knob, and it really does give a lot more positive feedback to the action because Ruger Americans are fairly clunky. Now, when I'm looking at a bolt action rifle, Again, for me personally, when I was building this, getting this thing set up, I needed some accuracy, but I didn't need the craziest, most expensive build. And I know a lot of you are in the same boat as me. Now, I would be lying if I didn't tell you guys that I do have a very precision-oriented bolt-action rifle in the works that will absolutely walk all over this particular build. But from a practicality standpoint, I think that you should not overlook a bolt action chambered in something like a 308 65 Creedmoor or something like that. I think that it's an important addition to your arsenal or looking at the four most important builds for any American. So guys, closing out this video then and wrapping up what we are looking at, I think that there is a cultural shift that is occurring in our nation. I think that what we're noticing is people are less prone today to just collect guns and have a bunch of guns sitting around in their house or in their safe. And I think that that's a good thing. I also think there's much work to be done. And the reason we wanted to make this video is we have seen over the years so many people that will just buy a gun like say a five inch 300 blackout like this. And then they decide to build three more of them because they like this build, but they'll take this upper and instead of an X 300 V they'll put some other light on it. They'll put a scope on one upper, but you know, a red dot on the other, but essentially they're just replicating the same build. Or you'll see people building cloner rifles like the Mark 18s, 10 threes, and they just build a ton of them. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with just building guns because you like building guns. But at some point, 
we have to recognize that it is more important for us to stop collecting guns and start building with purpose. And so the intent of this video is to encourage you guys. If you have five different Palmetto State Armory 16 inch uppers that have five different red dots, they run five different slings, and you've got all this inconsistency in your builds, you probably should refocus, reorient, and maybe start looking at some versatility. I know a lot of us like to think about this time where we might have to pass out a bunch of rifles and help arm up our communities, and I think that that's a good thing to be thinking about taking care of your community, but the reality is what you should be focusing on is checking off a couple boxes. For me personally, I wanna have an ultra discreet carbine, something like my five inch 300 blackout. I wanna have a discreet, but a bit more capable rifle than the five inch, something that I might not carry around every single day, and that's a 10.3 to me. I can carry it if I absolutely have to, but it's not one that I'm going to carry in public every day. It's more of a back and forth to work gun. To me, that checks off with a 10.3 inch 556. Then we're talking about general purpose builds, mid-range builds, 16 inch upper on an AR-15 lower really does check that box. And I really think it's important for Americans to have some sort of 16 inch rifle with a magnified optic. And then there are those cases like I just talked about where I think Americans should have a bolt action rifle, even though that might make you think that I'm a boomer, I think it's important to have a bolt action rifle on tap. You could argue a gas gun in 308, 65 Creedmoor would be a good idea. I would say there's certain applications where that's more beneficial, especially if they run SR25 mags or anything like that. You get more than 10 rounds, you get some potency, but there's just something about a bolt action rifle that checks off a bunch of boxes for me. So guys, if you disagree with me, there's a perfect opportunity here for you to get in the comments. Let me know what would your four guns be that you would build for the perfect all-American setup that checks off all of your boxes. Maybe you have a lever gun thrown in there or a high point. Please no high points, don't, no high points. <laughs> but whatever it might be, whatever type of gun you guys think checks off all these boxes, please let us know in the comments section. And also I wanna bring some attention back to the apparel. As you guys know, we recently launched our parent company, The Exodus Companies. We have a bunch of different brands that we are building up to help change culture. This hoodie is our seven F's hoodie. So it has the seven ingredients of culture. It's a great hoodie to wear out and about if you want to engage in the conversation of culture. If you wanna see more about that, you wanna support us in that way, exoduscompanies.com. That is where you can go to check out our apparel. You can listen to our podcast. Please consider subscribing to the podcast and YouTube channel. And also guys, if you like our content here, you like what we do at TA Targets, subscribe. At the very least, share this video with somebody. If you know there's a new shooter out there that is just getting into guns, tell them about this video because I think that it's gonna answer some questions and it might help them to avoid buying that sight mark red dot that costs $89. With that vertical grip that pops out into a, a bipod with 14 flashlights built into it, save them please from that. Just be a good friend, pass this on, pay it forward. As always, guys, we appreciate you. We appreciate the years of support and we'll catch you in the next one.